folks, thanks for taking some time to, to join us this evening. Um, my name is Zach Emmons. I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Communications for the Houston Dynamo Football Club. Uh, and I'm excited. I'll be moderating the, the town hall conversation tonight. And I think I speak for all of us. I know I'm excited uh, to get a chance to visit with our new majority owner and chairman, Ted Siegel. Um, as just before, we, before I bring Ted in, um, as y'all can probably imagine, we receive a ton of great questions from everybody. Uh, way more than we could possibly get to in, in the hour that we have. Um, but most of those questions fell into the same kind of buckets of you know, themes that people wanted to touch on. Uh, certainly uh, Ted's philosophy as an owner uh, and his kind of expectations for the club overall. A lot of questions about the Dynamo, what the general manager search, roster spend, uh, things like that. Um, a lot of questions about the Dash and how we elevate their profile. Questions about the stadium and the, the, the guest experience there. Uh, ticket sales and ticket pricing and attendance, some of those questions, uh, and then marketing and promotion how, and uh, you know, promoting the team and what we're doing on that stand, standpoint. So I want to make sure we get a chance to touch on all of those. But first, obviously, want to introduce the, the new majority owner and chairman of the Houston Dynamo Football Club, Ted Siegel. Ted, thanks for taking some time to, to chat with us tonight. Thank you, Zach, and uh, thank you for taking some time, and thank you for all of you out there for, for joining. Uh, I first want to say uh, that uh, all of you are in my thoughts uh, down there in Houston as uh, you're affected by Nicholas. I hope all of you and your families are safe and uh, want to thank you again for turning out for your support. I know it's been a tough run of play. I'm glad to be joining you tonight uh, on the heels of uh, our first victory uh, during uh, my tenure as owner um, and looking forward to brighter days ahead for both the Dynamo and the Dash. Awesome. Well, Ted, let's let's get right to it. I know we've got an hour and you know, we get started a little bit late, so we'll try and uh, maybe make that up on the back end. But I want to get to as many questions from people as possible. Um, starting off, I'm going to take a little bit of liberty, ask a question of my own, only because I didn't see anybody else ask it. And I think it's important to kind of level set. Um, you mentioned starting your tenure as an owner. We're 84 days in since you were introduced as the majority owner of the club. Um, Tell me about what that what the process has been like for you. You know, you go from evaluating an asset that you might be purchasing to now running a company. What's that onboarding process been like for you? How's that these 84 days been in terms of getting familiar with this organization now? So it's a uh, oft cliche, uh, oft used cliche, but it really has been uh, drinking from a fire hose, I, I would say, Zach. Um, uh, you know, for as much preparation as you can do in advance of the acquisition, and what you expect your ownership to be like. Um, it's an entirely different thing uh, once you uh, assume the ownership. And uh, certainly uh, I, I knew going in um, how important this, these clubs are to our community and uh, the important role that I have uh, as a steward of a community asset. Um, but then to actually take the reins and uh, take the reins during a challenging moment in time, particularly for the Dynamo, um, you feel the weight of uh, the, the team's uh, performance. And uh, uh, look, as, as I've begun to familiarize myself with uh, various facets of the organization, be it on the business side uh, or be it on the sporting side, um, uh, we're, we're uh, in a process of uh, assessing where we can improve where we're doing well, um, and, and uh, there's always room uh, to do better in a lot of respects. Um, unfortunately, in, in one regard, uh, we, we had to part ways with uh, Matt Jordan, who, uh, again, I'll, I'll, I'll say it over and over again, is an uh, uh, extraordinarily uh, uh, fine individual who was deeply invested in the success of this club. Um, but uh, we, we felt that there was a moment in time here where we needed to move on, and, and so we, we've... Uh, uh, we've done that and uh, we've commenced uh, our, our search and I know we'll get into that a little bit more uh, during the course of this conversation, um, uh, all with the uh, objective of, uh, of building a successful organization on and off the pitch. Okay, um, I appreciate that. And yeah, we'll, uh, I want to kind of start uh, talking about maybe your, your philosophy as an owner and what your, how you look at things big picture and then from there we'll, we'll get into definitely uh, the GM search and some more Dynamo specific things and Dash specific things. Uh, first question I want to get to though comes from Brandon Campbell. Uh, Brandon was, is an original Dynamo member since 06. Um, it kind of aligns with what I, what I just asked you, but he wanted to know what are the results of your evaluation of the organization so far, uh, particularly ticketing and sales, stadium operations, things like that. And what processes are you planning to implement to, to rebuild the fan culture? 
So uh, with respect to any conclusions that we've made, I, I would say it's uh, far too early to have definitive conclusions 84 days in. Um, I think we're still very much uh, in the assessment process, uh, gathering information and trying to figure out where we can make improvements. I think in, in certain areas there were, um, to use an, another cliche, so to speak, uh, some low hanging fruit that we knew right away that we can improve upon. Um, so for example, we made the announcement uh, early in our tenure about uh, the uh, implementation of safe standing going into next season. Um, I, I thought that that was an uh, obvious thing that we could do that uh, I, I think our supporters have been asking for for some, some time. And, and that's just one of uh, many facets of our uh, analysis into our organization's physical infrastructure at the stadium, at the training grounds um, uh, that, that we're doing to, to understand where we can improve uh, both our team's performance and our fan experience. Okay. Um, next one I want to get to, uh, we got a lot of questions about this. Um, you know, folks asking uh, about kind of the structure of, of the ownership group and, uh, you know, how involved with the current minority owners. So uh, Gabriel Brenner, Oscar De La Hoya, Ben Gill, and James Harden, how involved will they be in the decision-making process as it pertains to specifically like things like roster and transfer spending, uh, Academy investment, things like that. And this comes from uh, Jay and Hanson, uh, who's a, a fan who lives up in New York, up your way. Got it. Um, so uh, uh, I, I am the uh, clear uh, majority owner and chairman um, by virtue of our uh, partnership arrangement and by virtue of what the league mandates. There is one and only decider, and that person is me. Um, now I value and respect the input of my partners. I welcome it. Um, in many cases, or in all of these cases, these are individuals who have uh, uh, experience with the organization that precedes me. And uh, uh, I'm sure there is some worthwhile perspective. They're, they're uh, open and willing to share it. And, uh, and I'm, uh, 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 I'm welcoming of it. Uh, in addition, uh, we do have scheduled uh, uh, quarterly meetings. Uh, one is coming up in the near future, and, and, and that is a means of me to update my partners uh, on, on what we're doing at the organization and for me to, to hear them out. And, and Jay, and actually it was a, a two-part question. Um, he, he touched on another question that uh, you know, certainly came up quite a bit and uh, I'll ask it at risk. It put my own neck on the line here, but um, obviously you made the decision with, with Matt. Folks were asking, you know, where's the next, uh, where are you, I guess, in the evaluation process on the front office side of the organization? Um, I, I've used this phrase often and I'm going to continue to use it. We're going to give everybody a fair shake to perform. Um, and, uh, and, and so I would say that uh, no uh, conclusions have been made as to any other changes uh, to, to the organization on the business end. Okay. Uh, next one I want to get to is from Felipe Cavedo. Felipe is another original Dynamo member since 06, uh, Dash since 2014 as well. Um, just kind of what wants to know what your vision for the team, uh, both teams, is uh, over the next five, 10, 15 years? And, and also what are some of the benchmarks that you've set to, to get to that vision? Yeah, so I, I, I think uh, the, the, uh, the plans be it five, 10 or 15 years across are, are consistent throughout. Um, and, and that's uh, success for the organization. Now, what is success? That, that, that is uh, both success on the field, that is winning and, and leaving our mark in the community. And, and so uh, it, it's very easy to measure success. It's, uh, it's uh, wins, losses, and draws, and, uh, and, and playoff appearances and championships. So that's an easy metric. Um, the, uh, the other element uh, that I measure success by is our impact on the community. And part of that is uh, fostering a connection, again, through uh, winning on the pitch, but it is also how we can leave our mark uh, uh, as, as a franchise, as, uh, as two franchises um, within the community, the good works that we can do. Um, we've announced some of them. We have uh, uh, several coming up uh, down the line. Um, and uh, and I, I think that is a uh, metric which you can uh, measure in a few ways. Uh, number one, for example, to, to the extent that we are dedicating new mini pitches, um, you can count how many of those there are. Um, how that translates into uh, uh, growing the sport in our community, um, maybe uh, 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 developing a player uh, who comes out of their first experience playing on those mini pitches. 
that's a less tangible metric, um, uh, but the objective should be doing good works uh, that connect us to the community. Okay. Um, staying kind of on, on metrics and, and data, um, Zach Berry, who's a, a newer Dynamo member, joined in 2018, um, asked, you know, so many of the historical great teams in MLS have integrated data analytics into, the, into their decision-making process. How have you used data in your decision-making processes in your career to date? And then how do you plan on, on uh, integrating that within the club now as well? Uh, so I think that in any business, uh, certainly uh, in my day-to-day -day, uh, non-soccer uh, role and in our soccer role, uh, it's inevitable uh, that you're going to use data to make analyses and make decisions and form your decisions. Um, but it really is a question of uh, 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 how you use that data, um, because there's an abundance of data and, uh, and uh, you can uh, uh, gather a, 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 to ad infinitum. Um, but uh, if, if you're not using it uh, in a in a smart tactical way, um, that that that's not going to yield the results that you want. Um, and and so, uh, look, there's there's a lot that we can do uh, on the analytics side to uh, enhance our performance on the pitch, from uh, understanding how to optimize our players' performances, uh, understanding uh, which players to target to bring into the organization or to help uh, in their development if they're within the organization. And there's a lot of uh, business data metrics uh, as well that, uh, that we should be utilizing that we have uh, already within our control uh, to understand how to attract fans, to retain fans, um, uh, to understand what their wants are and preferences are. Um, and, and, and so we're putting a lot of that to good use. Okay. And last one, just on the kind of big picture stuff before we dive into the teams. Uh, I like this one. It came from Glenn Steinke, who's a, a Dynamo member since 2011. Um, just plain and simple, what's your number one focus going into the 2022 season? Uh, I, that, that, that's an easy one. That, that's winning. Um, now, that, that is a very simplistic answer, so I'll, I'll, I'll dive into that in, in a couple ways. Um, as you all know, a uh, 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 significant decision before us is uh, identifying a new uh, GM to bring into the organization, and so we're in the early days of uh, of that search and that, and that is uh, going to be an impactful decision. Um, that's a uh, decision that uh, will have consequences uh, with respect to our ability to succeed or not succeed. Um, uh, and, and coming uh, from that decision maker uh, is another objective that I have that I think that we've seen based on our performance, just looking at the number of goals per game that we have and that is, uh, fostering our, uh, our attack and our ability to execute. Um, and whoever is coming into that GM position is gonna have uh, a, a big seat at the table at, and identifying players who can fulfill that need. So it's winning, um, uh, principally based on the selection of a good GM who can identify the requisite, requisite talent that we need. Okay, I think that's a, that's a great segue then into kind of getting into some of the Dynamo, Dynamo specific questions. and. Um, you know, certainly the, the GM topic was, was very popular among the fans. So, um, you know, I'll just grabbed one from Aaron Foster. He's a Dynamo member since 2016. I uh, just want to know what are the criteria that you're going to use to select that GM? And then I'll, I'll tack on to that as well, uh, if you can, just you know, what the process looks like um, and maybe what the kind of timeline you have in your head of, um, you know, if you don't have to get a specific date, but kind of general timeline you have uh, in mind as well. Uh, sure. Uh, so, I know that there's a lot of diehards uh, on, on, on this meeting. And, and so forgive me if I don't identify every single trait that's within our job description and how we're going out there. I'm, I'm just gonna use that caveat up front. Um, but we're uh, clearly looking for somebody who has demonstrated success in the past. Um, and de demonstrating successes, uh, again, uh, uh, has a, a number of constituent parts. Um, one is, uh, being a uh, part of helping grow uh, winning organizations that, that have succeeded in the past um, uh, in, in terms of playoff appearances or championships, uh, depending on the league that they're in. Um, uh, in, in, in addition, uh, success is uh, uh, a proven track record of uh, developing uh, the youth system 
um, both from a perspective of uh, channeling those players into uh, uh, the first team and, and potentially um, uh, uh, cultivating uh, players that uh, can perform for you or that you can sell on as well. Um, so th th those are a few metrics, um, as I've stated before. Um, I, I think that uh, it is helpful if uh, an individual has familiarity with navigating the specific nuances and intricacies of Major League Soccer, uh, which is distinct in a lot of ways, both in terms of its rules and its play uh, from, from other leagues. Um, and, 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 and so th th those are a few of the high level criteria, but uh, certainly that, that's not all encompassing. With respect to a timeline, um, certainly with uh, a, a number of decisions uh, that we need made currently, um, as well as looking forward to uh, uh, milestone events that occur in any off season uh, and, and, and hitting the ground running to help our organization and, and uh, develop some of these uh, uh, structures and processes that we'd like to see take hold as soon as possible. Um, of course, we'd like to bring in somebody uh, much sooner rather than later. Um, I, I would say uh, um, uh, mid-fall, uh, without giving a, a more specific timeline uh, around that, um, is, uh, is, is uh, the, the timeline that we have. I would say mid-fall may be different in New York than in Houston, so we'll, we'll leave it as a very vague. <laughs> uh, let, 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 let's just use the official fall start date of uh, September 21, and, and uh, people can back out from there. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, next question came from Isaac Diefenbach. He's a, a Dynamo member since 2008, a Dash member since 2014. Uh, and I'm going to read this to you. So he said, as a fan who's been there from the very beginning, in recent years, it's felt like the organization has tried to distance itself from the history and tradition um, and our only period of sustained success. Uh, a movement capped off by a questionable rebranding. The team has lost many long-term fans and season ticket holders along the way. Are there any planned efforts to encourage past players or coaches or staff to get involved uh, with the organization to help bring back the tradition and draw the fans back to the team? Uh, so first of all, I, I, I very much welcome um, uh, the participation and input of, of our, our past players. I think it's impar important for any organization uh, uh, to recognize uh, uh, the, the great efforts and, and the significant events uh, in the history of the organization. That's how you um, can create ties to the past uh, that both your players and your fans can look to. Um, I'll say that uh, in, uh, in my brief 84 days, and I would say uh, in particular over the last several weeks um, uh, following the departure of Matt, I've been heartened by uh, the amount of outreach that I've gotten from former players. Um, both in terms of uh, raising their hand and, and saying that they want to get more involved and offering some of, uh, some of their initial input. Um, and uh, what we intend to do is to uh, create a, a, a more specific uh, role of a director of alumni relations to foster those ties to past players. And uh, I, I uh, do intend to uh, leverage the know-how of uh, some of the alumni in, in the selection of the GM, because I think that they bring a uh, perspective uh, on the sporting side um, uh, that, that is extraordinarily valuable. And uh, they bring a perspective on the community and what would be the right fit in Houston um, that, that is, uh, is valued. Um, uh, many of you know that uh, Brian Ching has been somebody who's been a longtime friend to our organization. And there are several others uh, that we've been in contact with. Okay. Um, I guess the, the next most popular question I think that came up quite a bit was in, in various ways, um, you know, specific to to spending on the team. Um, so I pulled a couple that I thought kind of covered different areas of it. But uh, Ryan Lefebvre asked, and he's a, a 2020 Dynamo member, 2021 Dash. Um, you say you're going to give more resources, and you said this in, I think on Glenn's radio show. That you're going to give more resources, but what does that mean? More scouts, more money to the academy, better better medical staff. What, can you give any uh, clarity on what that might mean? Yeah, so I think in in the context uh, uh, of the conversation with Glenn, and I will reiterate uh, uh, first and foremost, it's uh, 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 allocation to uh, materially higher player spend in the off season. 
Um, I, I think we all recognize that uh, our current spend is at or near the bottom of the league. Um, that's just not where it should be for uh, uh, a city as large as, as we have in Houston and our aspirations for what this club can be. Um, and, and, and so again, without getting into specifics, um, it will be materially higher and, and, uh, and soon uh, that will be a metric uh, that will be uh, open and obvious to everybody to judge us by. Um, uh, so that, that, that's on the player personnel side. Um, with respect uh, to other portions of the organization, um, I, I, I think the question hit on uh, a lot of the elements of where we intend to allocate resources. Um, so we are in the midst of a holistic review of our various physical infrastructure. Um, and so there's going to be resources allocated to our physical stadium, uh, which uh, I, I think uh, will be appreciated from a fan experience standpoint. Um, there is going to be uh, resources allocated to our, uh, our, our training grounds, um, which uh, will be useful for both the, uh, the comfort and development of the Dynamo and Nash squads. Um, and and I, I think also, hopefully in the long run, a recruitment tool to, to bring players here who can see that uh, we are uh, devoting the resources and committed to uh, 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 being a, a, a destination for players. Um, and, uh, and, and it's also from the player development side. So of course, uh, starting with the GM and, and, and some of the um, uh, uh, programs that we intend to put in place under that person's direction, um, scouting and otherwise, there's gonna be uh, additional resources allocated on those fronts. Okay. Um, and then, uh, I think, it, uh, something I, I, I probably should have asked earlier, and I saw several questions about this, and I know it's something you, you touched on with, with Glenn as well, um, but going back, um, probably be remiss if we didn't just touch on, on the, the, the GM search and then how that layers in with um, the coaching staff and things like that as well from a decision-making standpoint. So is the uh, question around, will the new GM have input on any decisions that we might have with uh, regards to uh, our, our current coaching situation? Yes. Uh, and the answer is we expect that there will be input from, from the GM on that front, on the coaching front. Okay. Um, and then, uh, like I mentioned earlier, several questions about um, the academy and kind of player scouting and things like that. Uh, Marcelo Alves, uh, who's a member since 2015, um, asked, you know, are there, is there any plan to attract well-known experienced players? There's a lot of people ask about that, you know, players from this league or that league. Um, and then additionally, any opportunities for collaboration or exchange with clubs? Marcelo asked about Brazil, but from, you know, country X. So I, I, I think that, uh, as I mentioned again on Glenn's show, um, there, there are certain well-known experienced players that, that we have on a so-called shortlist. Uh, again, that will uh, be refined by input of the new GM. Um, but we are going to be very judicious in uh, uh, identifying and, and bringing on uh, so-called well-known players um, because we recognize that it's a significant allocation of capital into one or two uh, 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 potentially uh, players. And uh, if, if you get that wrong, you can get it wrong in a big way. And, and, and so we wanna get the right players into this organization. And, and so there's gonna be a lot of thought and time um, uh, devoted to, to getting the right type of experience player. I'm not gonna uh, uh, state whether there's a preference from one geography or another. We're, we're just trying to get the best possible players that fit into our system of play and fit within our community of Houston. Um, uh, if, if it is Brazil or country X, um, uh, great. But I, I think the primary objective is uh, uh, getting players who help us succeed and win. Okay. Um, and then lots of questions came in about the, the Dynamo Academy. Um, uh, Frank uh, Aravalo asked, he's a member since 18, uh, said FC Dallas is one of the best development academies in the world. Um, what are your plans to improve the Dynamo Academy to develop young talent in Houston uh, to improve the pipeline for the first team? And, and professional soccer. And he says, you know, his opinion would help financially as well as on the field. 
Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I, I think that there were uh, certain programs that uh, were put in place by, by Matt Jordan that I, I, I do think will, will reap some success um, in, in terms of uh, 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 identifying players, giving them uh, more opportunities to uh, uh, play within uh, a, a specific um, sub-region within Houston. Uh, so that they don't have to bear a significant burden of traveling a long distance uh, to be within our academy system. Um, I know that we've also had uh, experience in terms of, uh, 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 I'm going to get the phrase wrong, but homestay uh, 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 situations where, where, where the players can, uh, 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 again, focus their, their play within um, uh, kind of under one roof. Um, and, and, and so there have been uh, good, good, uh, good works done on that front. Um, and, and again, we've been tackling this from, from the grassroots. So even from the earliest stages of soccer starts at home, which we're devoting some more resources to, uh, all the way to kind of the upper reaches of the uh, academy system and, and with the development of the, uh, the U23 league that is going to be coming into place next year, um, you, you're seeing that that will serve as a bridge uh, between the academy system and our first team, um, kind of allowing uh, those uh, transitional players to get more experience, more competitive experience that's going to help in their development over the long run. Um, all right, I want to transition over to, uh, to the Dash for a little bit. I know, um, a lot of questions about the Dynamo, but certainly got a lot of questions about the Dash as well. Um, Haiti Zabad, who's a first year Dash member this year, uh, asked, in what ways or what plans do you have to, to make the Houston Dash the best team in NWSL? So uh, uh, with respect to some of the commentary that, that I've been uh, making that I, I hope isn't entirely interpreted as uh, uh, exclusive to the Dynamo, um, we're, we're allocating uh, those same sorts of resources to the Dash. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So with respect to uh, enhancements at the training ground, um, uh, uh, Im improving uh, the spaces in which they train um, uh, to give them the best possible experience, both within for people within our organization at the Dash, and uh, and and bringing uh, uh, and, and and creating a training facility that is a recruitment tool um, to 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 bring people uh, to Houston. Um, uh, these are things that are being implemented both on the Dynamo side and on the Dash side. Um, and Dylan Sides, who's a, an original Dash member since 2014, um, I'll, I'll read you his question. He, he said, uh, we all want to have the, have the Dash fans in the stands to the level at or above Portland. Um, having sections of the lower bowl tarped off isn't a good luck. Um, having the, the ticket demand to fully open the upper bowl should be the goal. Uh, what steps are being taken to market the Dash to a broader audience? Um, well, I'll, I'll start with that one and then we'll kind of get a couple of different questions. So I guess uh, what, what's being done, I guess, to market to the broader audience for, from a dash. Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, first I'll, I'll agree uh, that it isn't a good look to have uh, uh, the upper section tarped off. And uh, as, as somebody here who's uh, here in New York, who's attended games uh, at, at Red Bull Arena, for example, for Gotham FC, and you see the uh, upper bowl tarped off there. It, it, it's not what any of us would like to see in the NWSL. Um, we envision uh, uh, these uh, uh, stadiums uh, being filled uh, in their entirety. Um, but uh, it, it, if that isn't the reality right now, um, what I would just state in terms of not being a good look, it, I think it's even worse if, uh, if the lower bowl uh, isn't full. And so it's, it's just uh, fans scattered throughout. So I, I think both from an atmosphere in stadium um, and, uh, and on television, um, uh, having a full lower bowl uh, is superior to uh, having, uh, with a tarped off uh, upper bowl, is superior to having um, just kind of a sparsely crowded uh, uh, stadium that, that uh, is open admission. Now, all of that is inferior to a full stadium, I reiterate, and that's our objective, uh, and I hope to get there one day. Uh, how are we going to get there? Um, uh, that there, there is a lot of uh, targeted marketing that we do. Um, uh, a lot of it is online based to, to find uh, fans who are uh, in particular supportive of the NWSL and, and the Dash. 
and, uh, and uh, using our resources to identify and bring those fans to the stadium. Um, so uh, I, I, I think that's one effort. And then uh, again, uh, it, it's, uh, uh, there, there's no substitute for winning. And so the more that they win, um, uh, the more that they'll be able to uh, attract new fans and, and, and grow their fan base. And uh, it's the same objective that we have with the Dynamo on that front. Okay. And then uh, kind of following on that, Dylan, Dylan asked, um, you, know, you mentioned having not seen Dash TV commercials. You said as a longtime fan and season ticket holder, it never seemed like the organization gave much attention to the Dash and we're only focused on the Dynamo. Um, will that change under, under your leadership? Um, I, I, I can assure you that it has already changed. I, I think uh, uh, speaking for myself and the directives that I'm giving the organization, um, there, there uh, needs to be uh, more uh, attention given to the Dash. I'm not just the owner of the Dynamo, I'm the owner of the Dynamo and the Dash. And, and, and so uh, uh, re resources uh, are being allocated to, to the Dash, both from a promotional standpoint and from an infrastructure standpoint, as I've touched on already. Um, in addition, um, that there is the, the, the sort of uh, uh, recognition uh, standpoint that uh, uh, within the community that can occur in other ways. And so that uh, uh, exists uh, via co-branding, uh, the, the Dash with the Dynamo, um, when permitted by sponsors and certainly within our own uh, community oriented events where, um, uh, where we're doing good works in the community. Um, it's a uh, outgrowth of the Dynamo and Dash organizations uh, with participation, I hope oftentimes with Dynamo and Dash players. And I think we've, we've started this season with that with you know, players even building relationships across and building friendships across the two teams over the last couple of years. Um, you know, certainly that was uh, that one club uh, mentality or ethos was part of the, the rebrand that happened about a year ago, uh, almost a year ago now. Um, and Kira Gesslin, uh, who's a Dash member since 2016, um, mentioned that so, uh, kind of similar to Dylan, so Dash still seem to be treated as second tier, less media promos, lower quality fan experience, uh, banners being removed for, for Dash games versus Dynamo games. Uh, some of the stuff you touched on, uh, but she asked, how was that one club uh, belief system actually being implemented? Is there any tangible change toward that end? I, well, I, I, I think I just touched on it in, in, in certain ways, and I, I think you did as well, Zach, um, uh, be it in some of these softer ways where we, we have uh, uh, Dynamo and Dash players supporting one another uh, via social media or, or, or at the games, um, or be it in a more tangible way of uh, uh, co-branding uh, the organizations, uh, be it on sponsorship assets or in, in community good works efforts. Um, uh, th these are the ways that we're trying to create a linkage uh, between the two organizations. Um, Want to kind of transition now uh, and touch on you, you mentioned facilities a little bit earlier, um, you know, and you kind of alluded to you're not just the owner of the Dynamo, you're the owner of the Dash, uh, but you're also steward of, of BBVA Stadium and Houston Sports Park as well from a facility standpoint. Um, Daniel Peterson asked, and he's a, a member since 2009. Um, what's the likelihood of, of possible structural changes to the stadium to improve airflow, i.e. opening corners of the stadium or removing seats, installing in-seat air and water coolant systems like they're doing in Qatar for the World Cup, things like that? Um, so as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are in the midst of a holistic review of our infrastructure. Um, we're, we're awaiting some conclusions and recommendations on that front. And from that, then we will issue a request for proposals from uh, various architecture firms uh, to uh, uh, implement and execute some of these plans. Um, and, and so uh, we are still in the earlier uh, days of that. And again, like many of these things that we're undertaking, uh, be it the acquisition of a high profile player, um, the selection of our GM, we wanna be thoughtful and judicious about how we do it particularly with uh, respect to something like infrastructure, because once you undertake it, um, it, it it's hard to undo something um, if, if you get it wrong. And, and if you are undoing it, it probably is coming at great expense and even more inconvenience for our fans. Um, so what I will say is it is certainly under review as to how to create more uh, air corridors uh, for our fans who uh, uh, are 
uncomfortable uh, during the stadium experience. We've done some things and might enhance uh, certain efforts like adding more fans, uh, large scale fans to the rafters. Um, we are probably uh, uh, coming to the end of the useful life of our seats in the stadium. And so we can make decisions around uh, how to improve uh, the seats uh, from an airflow or uh, uh, heat retention standpoint. Um, and, and, and these are uh, just uh, a few of the many things that we're, uh, that we're looking at. Um, uh, with respect to what the Qataris are doing for the World Cup and uh, in-seat uh, water cooling systems, um, I'm, I'm not entirely familiar with, with how the, those systems work. Um, uh, I, I, so I, I, I won't definitively opine on that, but it, it might uh, sound like something that uh, uh, is beyond what we're uh, in, in, intending to do uh, for uh, a multiple of reasons, but uh, probably in, including the fact that uh, even though uh, the Houston heat is brutal, I, I, I think it's next level in Qatar. I will, I will say, I, like you, I don't know about the in-seat uh, cooling and things like that, but I, I will give a quick shout out to our grounds crew. Um, the grass on, on the pitch at BBVA Stadium is the same grass that will be played on in, in Qatar uh, next winter. So uh, Dan Bergstrom and his crew have done a phenomenal job getting the pitch back in shape. I know our fans have all commented on or a lot of them. It, 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 it's a good thing to point out, Zach, because it's noticeable um, uh, both in terms of how it's held up over the course of this season and it's held up uh, uh, throughout the, the various uh, conditions that you typically expect in Houston, uh, the extreme heat, um, the uh, significant amounts of rain that you get, but also from uh, some of the wear and tear that uh, uh, is a result of the uh, various other undertakings and events that occur at BBVA, be it the, uh, the concert that we ha had uh, last month uh, 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 at BBVA or uh, some of the football games that we, uh, uh, U.S. football games that we have uh, at BBVA. So uh, all the credit to our uh, grounds crew because uh, it, it really is holding up really well. And I'm actually going to use the grounds crew as kind of a, a transition. I didn't need to, but I realized I can. Uh, next question came from Antonio Rubio. He's a, a longtime fan. Um, he was asking about uh, what we're doing to catch up to the rest of MLS in terms of infrastructure. Uh, we seem to have one of the smallest training centers in MLS without adequate space for the for the dash and the academy, I know the ground crew is building a second pitch out there is one of those things. But looking at HSP, what are the some some of the things out there that are being done? Yeah, so uh, you, you touched on on one of the easy ones, which was uh, our approving the the construction of a second pitch, which is again for a uh, uh, professional soccer club a no brainer, um, and 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 something that uh, I was eager to support. Um, the, the good thing about Houston Sports Park, um, and it again fits into our overall holistic assessment, and we're making many determinations as to what we should be doing to execute on it, is that it at Houston Sports Park, it is uh, such a significant blank canvas. There is room for us to grow there, be it through uh, the addition of more uh, physical infrastructure to uh, house the Dynamo and Dash, uh, the addition of, of new pitches, uh, the addition of other new high performance areas. So all of that is falling into this performance study. Again, I, I, I know that people are looking for more specifics and more specifics will be coming in the coming months um, as we make determinations based on, 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 on some of the uh, assessments that, that are currently underway. Um, I will also say that uh, we are uh, undertaking a tour of some of the uh, high performance training grounds of, of, of some of our fellow clubs. Um, the, the great thing uh, about uh, the MLS is that we have ownership that is invested in everybody else's success. And so while we might be uh, playing each other uh, two or three times a year, and then on, on those days we're, we're rivals, um, coming from my first Board of Governors meeting uh, uh, at the end of the month at the All-Star Game uh, in Los Angeles, I uh, was struck uh, by the amount of support um, and, uh, and, and idea sharing uh, that was coming from other owners who, who want to see Houston succeed. Um, and, and so uh, we're gonna take them up on, on some of their recommendations and uh, we're gonna tour a lot of the stadiums and training grounds uh, to 
to garner best practices as to what we should be doing back at BB, BBBA and at, uh, at the Houston Sports Park. That's, that's really great to hear. That's something you don't hear about very often. Is you, you see about the rivalry on the field, um, but you don't really know what the dynamic is like behind the scenes like that. Um, I do want to transition a little bit to, to the business side of things. Uh, we've got probably 15, 20 minutes left, and there were several questions about ticket sales and attendance, marketing, like I said earlier. Um, so talking just kind of on the, on the ticketing and fan experience side to start with, uh, Jason Mendel, who's a, a member since 2012, uh, said besides putting together a winning team, what additional strategies are being executed to increase attendance at, at games, both for Dynamo and for the Dash? So it, it is uh, just finding ways to uh, make it an enjoyable experience for the fans. And, and, and so, um, uh, again, we're, we're uh, doing this analysis as to uh, how we can enhance the fan experience at the stadium. Um, part of it is just uh, uh, comfort at the stadium. And, and so to the earlier question as to what we can do to abate the heat for the fans, um, that's underway. Uh, what are uh, different um, uh, seating areas uh, that, that, that uh, we can uh, enhance or create uh, to uh, improve the fan experience? What can we be doing around the stadium um, to, to gather our fans to, to create a sense of uh, team and community? Um, uh, you know, as somebody, uh, who, who, uh, as I talked about on Glenn show, uh, uh, a good meal, how can we be improving our concessions? Um, so th these are a variety of ways beyond, um, uh, just, uh, our performance on the pitch, uh, where we should be trying to make it a memorable, uh, enjoyable, uh, experience for fans that makes them want to return. And I think, um, Kind of dovetailing off of that, um, uh, you know, you mentioned the, the premium seating. There were several questions about that. Several questions about um, you know, ticket pricing strategy and things like that. Ma uh, Matt Lacey, who's a Dash member, uh, asked, um, "Why not decrease ticket prices and try to drive attendance and excitement? Crowd size is a virtuous cycle." He says, uh, "Marginal cost of cleaning up from, from additional fans should easily be offset by the ticket price. Um, shoot for break even, make the games more exciting. How do you balance?" that um, you know, driving attendance, finding the right ticket pricing, uh, that, the right price point, things like that. So there, there, there's a whole section of our staff who has expertise on this that, that I lack. So I, I might speak in a, a few uh, simplistic ways about this. Um, uh, number one, I, I, I think that we, uh, as clubs at the Dynamo and Dash, um, have uh, relatively affordable options uh, for a great game day experience for our fans. Um, and for anyone who's ever been in BBVA, my opinion is there's no bad seat in the house. Um, uh, beyond that, we have certain promotional evenings like the 713 nights, uh, which I, I think are a great deal both to, to get in the building and, and uh, enjoy some of our concessions at the building. Um, uh, from a uh, more uh, technical uh, uh, standpoint about how to calibrate ticket pricing. Um, uh, there, you want to be thoughtful about uh, offering a product without creating an expectation in the fan that uh, uh, cheapens the product in the long run. So if we uh, all of a sudden, uh, and I'm not saying we're going to do this, and this is just for the absurdity of the hypothetical, cut our uh, ticket pricing to $1, uh, fans get used to that and will expect that the, <laughs> the, the uh, price of admission is gonna be $1 and, and that's not a tenable situation, nor do I think that uh, adequately uh, reflect, appropriately reflects the value of our clubs. Yeah. Um, and then uh, this is a, a question uh, from Larry Rose, he's an original member since 06. Um, he asked, when do we go back to having annual original members with management. I was at something that predates you. So um, I'll ask in terms of you know, what are your plans for, I guess, that fan engagement in, in whatever shape or form under your leadership? Uh, so um, I'll, 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 I'll put it to my uh, 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 staff at the organization. I think that uh, all of us should be more engaged with our fans. We should make ourselves available. Uh, uh, speaking for myself, um, beyond the directives that I'm, I'm, I'm giving to our management, um, who I, I have seen are around uh, the facilities making themselves very much uh, available, but 
I will continue to reiterate that level of accessibility for them um, is uh, uh, on a personal basis, making myself available, uh, be it in this forum, uh, be it when I'm at the stadium, uh, be it uh, on, on shows like Glenn Davis's and others, um, to, to know that uh, uh, I'm somebody who uh, uh, recognizes and values the support uh, that our fans give and, and, and recognizes the input that they have, because without them, um, th there's really no uh, clubs here. Um, it, it's all about the fans and, uh, and uh, without them, we, we don't have organizations. Very well said. Um, all right, transitioning over to you know, marketing, promotion of the team, community outreach, things like that. Uh, Chris Menzel is another original member since 2006. Uh, had, had kind of a long question, so I'll read it here. Um, he said, when Houston first began as a franchise in MLS, we had great media coverage. There was good, strong English speaking uh, radio outlet for all of our games. There was good television coverage for our games uh, on the regional sports channel. Um, now the only radio outlet available is Spanish uh, and or difficult to pick up. Local TV never mentions the Dynamo or hardly does. Um, even local radio uh, Dynamo only mentions one or two hour shows like Glenn Davis. Um, no one calls in or, or, or seems to care about the team and it's contributing to the decline of the Dynamo as a relevant sports entity. Um, what plans do, does the organization have to change that? So I, I, I think there are uh, elements small and large. There are elements uh, uh, like getting us back on ESPN radio. Uh, and I think uh, in, in this year and the year ahead, that's occurring to some extent. Um, but, but a big driver of this and how you maintain uh, attention and, and uh, uh, of, of the press and the community is, is, is by winning. Um, it, it's easy to become an afterthought thought when you're at the, the bottom of the table. Um, and, and, and so what we're going to try to do uh, uh, is, is uh, build a successful club because um, uh, the uh, media will have no attention uh, but to, or uh, they will have no choice but to provide attention uh, for our organization if, if we're, we're winning, if our stadium is packed, and if we're uh, capturing the attention of our community. Um, but, uh, you know, Zach, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you're, you're, you're somebody, uh, whose, uh, day-to-day -day job is, uh, 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 consumed in big part, uh, by this. What, 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 what are some thoughts that you have on this front? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's kind of where I made my, my whole career was in, in media, uh, media relations. And, um, certainly I think you know, obviously winning helps, but there's a lot that we can do, uh, in terms of, uh, really pitching stories, being more aggressive. Um, it, it's, we're in a position right now where people aren't just lined up to come cover us on a day-to-day -day basis. So we have to continue to be more aggressive. And that's something, uh, one of our big points of focus going out uh, into 2022, um, both for Dynamo and Dash is really trying to tell the story of who our players are, not just as professionals, but as people as well. Um, and then real quick, um, you know, Chris, to your point about that no one calls in or cares about the team, if I can give a real quick 30 second spiel to, to all the folks that are that are on here, the one thing you guys can do, three things, call, click, and comment. Um, I talk to news directors and editors all the time. They all say, I wish we could give you more coverage. We just, I can't justify it to my bosses. They look at, at engagement rates. They look at clicks on their, on their website. They look at who's calling into radio shows. Even if you call in and they don't put you on, keep calling. They're going to eventually have to do it. Um, so I think as soccer fans, and I, I'm, a fan myself, we have to demand the coverage that we want, and then we have to reward the people that are covering it by clicking on their stories too. Um, so that that's my quick spiel. Um, going back into to promoting the teams here, um, Alejandro Zamora Jr. as uh, a, a new member in 2019 uh, asked, "What are some of the steps uh, that the team is taking to to promote Dynamo and Dash in in advertisements, commercials, things like that?" Um. Uh so I, I, I think uh, one of the steps is probably upping our advertising budget. I think we've done it over the last couple of years. And, and I, I, I think that we're going to uh, continue our ad spend to, to increase awareness on, on that front. Um, and, you know, that's through uh, a variety of media channels, be it um, kind of uh, your more conventional old, old school media, be it newspapers or, or, or TV. Um, or uh, more targeted uh, new media uh, through digital. Um, and uh, I, I think uh, 
work that we can be doing is uh, fostering and enhancing our ties uh, with our corporate sponsors um, to increase uh, and promote, uh, increase awareness and promote uh, uh, awareness of the Dynamo. Um, and, and, and so some, that's something that um, I, I think uh, uh, we, we should continue to set our, set our sights on. And then uh, beyond uh, the advertising element of, of promoting the Dynamo, and I've said it before, uh, it's uh, getting out there uh, in the community um, uh, from a community service uh, uh, and charity standpoint. Um, that's something that I've been pushing. I'm going to continue to push. And, uh, and uh, of course, that uh, beyond the good work that's being done, uh, uh, enhances uh, the awareness of the Dynamo and Dash in our community. Okay, and then uh, kind of to that point of community outreach, uh, Jeff Oregon, who's a another uh, 06 original member, asked, uh, except for the suburban soccer clubs, the Dynamo and Dash haven't done have done a poor job of fan grassroots outreach in Houston, especially large number of soccer players and fans, i.e., adult leagues, Hispanic and Asian leagues, the fans of the European teams and the Mexican teams, high school, college teams, things like that. Um, are there any plans to change this strategy and instead connect with these groups who are passionate about soccer versus the generic sports marketing strategies to try and attract uh, random Houstonians who, who may not care about the sport? Absolutely. And, and, and so I, I think there needs to be a rededication to outreach of, of these organizations. I know we, we have had historically a, a street team. Um, uh, the circumstances of COVID have uh, probably um, uh, uh, made that a, a more challenging sort of outreach, but I think going forward as, as we emerge from uh, uh, certainly the, the, the challenging conditions of 2020, um, we need to be putting our grassroots resources into the various community events, the uh, various soccer related events from, from youth to adult uh, that, that exist throughout our community. Um, and they're extensive. Um, and and the, the, the beauty of Houston is that it is so large and so diverse that um, it can almost seem uh, overwhelming to, uh, or impossible rather, to, uh, to get to all of them. Um, but we, we need to uh, enhance our efforts to uh, uh, get our, ourselves out there to the various community events and the, uh, the various Soccer Sunday uh, events that, that uh, occur uh, throughout our community. Uh, uh, throughout the year. Great. Um, and guys, I know we're, we're coming up on seven. Um, we started a few minutes late, so I want to uh, try and steal a couple minutes here at the end just to wrap things up. Um, Ted, these are couple last couple of just more big picture again. Uh, Justin Highland, who's a former Dynamo member, um, asked, he said, you know, I was a Dynamo member from 2006 to 2016. Now that you've taken over as majority owner, give me a tangible reason why I should come back. Well, um, you, I, I don't expect um, Justin to, to judge me by what I'm projecting is going to be done in the offseason, and these things are going to happen, um, uh, like, uh, like the player spend that's going to occur in the offseason, like the uh, allocation of capital uh, to our infrastructure that's going to happen in the offseason. What I can say that has tangibly occurred to date which is challenging to do when you're 84 days in and you take over uh, at the end of June mid-season is we've already allocated resources to certain players, be it uh, bringing on teenage, bringing on um, some of the other players, be it uh, Coco or uh, uh, Corey Baird or uh, 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 Griffin Dorsey. Um, so we've, we've already uh, been allocating resources to the roster and I'll say that there's going to be significantly more um, uh, 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 capital allocated in the offseason on that front. We've already announced that we're going to uh, be implementing uh, safe standing uh, in this coming offseason. And that's just the easiest thing that, that we can do from an infrastructure uh, standpoint. Um, we've already added uh, another training pitch uh, to our training grounds. Um, so, so these are uh, uh, specific examples of the longer term objective. Um, we've already allocated uh, resources to various Dynamo charities, various community charities. Uh, there's going to be a lot more done on that front going forward. Um, uh, so uh, 
of course, the ultimate metric is, is winning, and, and we haven't done that uh, much over the course of the season. So long term, uh, I'll, I'll say that's how all, all fans uh, should judge how we're performing. Um, uh, but uh, everything that I just outlined is, is uh, uh, with the intention of uh, creating that winning organization. Okay. And then one last one. I, I, I really like this one as I was uh, going through the questions. Um, I think it's a great way to kind of wrap things up. Uh, Christopher Wright, who's a, a member since 2019, asks, um, if you could sum up what you want uh, the club's identity to be in a few words, what would that be? Uh, so, uh, again, I, 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 I don't want to delve into cliches, and, and uh, I don't know how many people watched Monday Night Football last night, but uh, it, 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 it might be cliche now, but it started as, as something um, – uh, that, that carried a lot of weight and that still does. And, and the Raiders uh, old phrase, a commitment to excellence. And that has application in so many ways. Of course, it has application as to how the team is performing in the, in the table. Um, and so our commitment is to building a winning club uh, uh, that, that succeeds on and off the pitch. Um, that's winning games. Um, that's a force for good in our community. Um, that has a first class uh, uh, training ground for our clubs. Um, and, and, and so uh, commitment to excellence is an oft used, but I, I, I think uh, uh, a still important phrase that, that we can apply here. Awesome. Um, I think that's a, a great way to, to end things. Um, guys, I know I didn't, I wasn't able to get to everybody's questions, but I hope that we were able to, to cover the topics that, that all of you, uh, most of you at least uh, submitted questions about. So um, I want to thank all of y'all for, for spending an hour with us, Ted. Thank you very much for, for taking some time out of your schedule. Uh, I know you're, you've got uh, a family at home, and I'm sure you have dinner plans and things like that. So thanks for uh, taking some time out of the evening to, to help us get to know you a little bit. Yeah, it, it, it's my pleasure. I, I, I just want to say thank you again to all the fans who joined tonight. Uh, it, it's a commitment uh, uh, of an hour of your guys' time, and uh, I, I certainly recognize uh, – uh, your devotion uh, to this club and, and uh, I just want to do right by you. So thank you again.